and physical remnants of the 9-11 tragedy are permanently on display in Oaklawn. The southwest side community is as close as can be to Chicago. The suburban village shares two borders with the city. Our Amanda Vinicky and producer Marissa Nelson spent the day in Oaklawn as part of our Chicago Tonight in Your Neighborhood series. Amanda joins us now from the First Responders Memorial right on the Oaklawn Patriot Station Metro stop. Amanda. Yes, Brandis, I'm surrounded by 12 and a half tons of steel beams carved uh, or sculptures that is carved from beams from the World Trade Center. Local first responders here in Oak Lawn were instrumental in raising funds for this project, including police officer Pat Curran, who back in 2001 had only been with the apartment for about two and a half years when he volunteered to go to New York City to help police there a couple of weeks after the 9-11 attack. We did actually get down to ground zero itself and it was, you know, just as bad as the pictures you see, you know, and the, you know, the fires were still burning, you know, the rubber, you know, the smell of rubber and it smelled like diesel fuel in the air. It was, I'll never forget that. Curran says that he served as relief for very tired New York police officers that had been working around the clock, searching trucks near high value targets, verifying IDs at checkpoints, and then once being present to honor a fallen officer's memory. I remember we were walking between assignments at one point and we were by uh, St. Patrick Cathedral and a police officer came out and said, hey, can you guys come in for a funeral? There was no officers there because they were all working. Now much has changed in since then. He's now been with the force for 23 years. The memories linger, but he says his concern as a member of law enforcement has shifted from worries about international terrorism to domestic and to regular crimes, including in schools. Now you have Mary Terry Vorder, born and raised here in Oak Lawn. After graduating from nearby Brother Rice, he joined the military and says that when he came back, like many combat soldiers from Vietnam, he was a lost soul. Then he saw an ad that the Oak Lawn Police Department was hiring, and that is where he found his place. He's now retired from a long career as a policeman here, and he was elected just in April to serve as the village's mayor. Some 55,000 people live here in Oak Lawn, making it one of Illinois' largest or top 25 municipalities. I often say that my wife, when we talk about moving on in life, I says, why would I move? I says, my car dealer's a block away, my doctor lives on the corner, my dentist is on the other corner, and my undertaker lives down the street. I got it all. Why would I leave Oaklawn? Oaklawn really saw its population begin to take off in the 70s when white residents left the south side of Chicago. And we're going to have more on the census later, but the most recent data still shows that a majority, about 80% of the population here is white. But like many other southwest suburbs, there's also a sizable Muslim population. Karen Danielson is a member of the Mosque Foundation. It's about a 12 minute drive away in Bridgeview and many Muslims in Oak Lawn and the surrounding area do worship there. Danielson says that while Islamophobic rhetoric existed before 9-11, the terrorist attack increased it. And in the days after the mosque saw marches, there was a lot of fear. She says it was a wake up call for the community. We were being associated as guilty party, as the guilty ones. And so we had to try to figure out how do we um, engage our society and not, you know, continue to be this sort of isolated community from the American public. And we knew that the, the best way was to, you know, become familiar to the American public for who we really are. She says Islamophobia still exists, but she believes that Americans are learning to understand their differences. Of course, COVID does not recognize religion. It does not know race. And Oak Lawn is home to Advocate Christ Medical Center, which right now has 70 COVID patients. The medical director of the ICU hopes that the Delta surge is reaching its peak. But heading into colder weather, he says it is impossible to know what direction the virus will take next. People ask these questions where they're asking us to look to the future and we have to look into our crystal ball, which is caked in concrete and try to break it off and imagine what we're going to see. And it's hard to say. 
I think what we do know is that there's 90 plus million Americans who are eligible for the vaccine that have not been vaccinated. And the more people that we get vaccinated, we know that they're less likely to be hospitalized when they're vaccinated. So I encourage people to go out and get the vaccine because it's safe and effective. Now, meanwhile, Oak Lawn residents are trying to adjust to the new normal. The newly elected village clerk has four kids, and I asked Claire Henning if she was concerned about sending them back to school. She had a very quick answer. No, she said she was more than ready for them to return to the classroom, as were her kids. They are more excited to be in school, definitely. I, I don't think anyone, parents or child, enjoyed the e-learning process, so... Everyone's been excited to be back in school. So when they're not in school or probably when they're not doing homework, Henning says that her children like to take advantage of Oak Lawn's robust park system. The village has a golf course, a couple of pools and 24 parks. Now renovations to one of them, Lawn Manor, were just completed this spring. Now this construction was previously planned, but park director Tom Hartwig says with the lingering of the pandemic, the timing of a giant outdoor fitness center was serendipitous. It's kind of new to Illinois. We're one of the newer uh, park districts. There's a few others that have them, but it's a set fitness court where you walk up with your phone, you hit a, a QR code and it tells you how to use the, the, uh, the equipment. And then it's based on levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. You can get a, a, a really amazing workout or a, a beginner workout, but we got lucky. Now, if you're looking for more of a mental workout, Oak Lawn offers what Southside Escape Room's owner, Brandon Udicious, says is an hour long team building experience unlike any other. A nine room whodunit in which people go through the quote unquote mansion that he and his wife designed and built. It's kind of like a live action clue. Without giving too much away, we try to build our games where there's like this wow factor somewhere in the middle where something happens and the environment changes on you. It's different than what you were expecting. So we try to build from that point before it and then after it. So when we're waiting for people to hit those wow points where you literally will hear the crowd like clockwork every single time go, whoa, those are those time kind of moments that we wait for. And more fun ahead in Oak Lawn after a year off because of the pandemic. This weekend, the village will once again be hosting its festival Fall on the Green. But also this weekend, a more somber occasion at 9-11 a.m. Saturday morning. Right here, there will be a memorial ceremony remembering the those lost in the 9-11 attack. With that, Brandis, back to you. Wow, Amanda, and what a story from Officer Pat Curran uh, earlier in your reporting. Thank you. We'll, we'll hear more from you coming up in a bit.